Hey everyone, recently a viewer asked me how to set up the Affinity workspace to look the way it does in my videos. So today I'm going to walk you through the process of customizing your Affinity Photo workspace, step by step. Let's dive right in. When you first open Affinity Photo, you'll see the default workspace with the tools toolbar on the left and some useful panels on the right. While it's a decent starting setup, I like to personalize it with panels that I use regularly to streamline my workflow. To start, I like to add a few panels to the left side since I have enough screen space. First up, I'm moving the histogram panel over to the left. You can do this by dragging it out from its current position. And you'll see a snap indicator when it is ready to drop. Next, let's get rid of the panels I don't use, like the navigator panel. I'll drag it out from the bottom right group and close it. I do like the scope panel, so I'll first enable this from the window menu. I want this below the histogram panel. Well, this is not going to be easy. As I'm getting close to the side of the screen, the window snapping feature gets in the way. A quick fix is to unmaximize the Affinity Photo window. I now have some additional space before Windows gets in the way. As you can see, the panel snapping feature of Affinity is a kind of buggy. I'm not able to snap the scopes panel below the histogram panel. Don't ask me why. For the time being, let me group it with the histogram panel and try another panel. A panel I frequently use is the info panel as this contains the samplers. Let's enable it from the window menu and try snapping it below the histogram panel. This one actually snaps quite well, so I'll leave it there. I'll then move the scope panel to the group with the info panel. Since I have a lot of assets, the assets panel is essential for me. I'll put this between the info and the histogram panels. To position the scope panel below the histogram, I'll first group it with the assets, then move the assets panel above the info panel. Excellent. That took a bit of fiddling, but I got the panels set up just as I wanted. Let's maximize the window again and continue with setting up the other panels. As you figured out by now, you first need to enable the panel you want from the window menu and then drag it to the position you like. I'll add the library and the macro panel into the same group as the assets. These are super useful if you use macros. On the right side, I like to have the swatches panel, so let's enable it. And by default, it is added after the color panel, which is exactly where I want it to be. The quick effects panel is also very useful to have, so let's enable that one too. It is grouped into the Layers panel, which is OK, but let me move it closer to the Layers panel. The Channels panel is also in this group, but I prefer this to be at the bottom right. The Brushes panel will go up just after the Swatches panel. The Stock panel can stay here, but I will add the Styles panel to this group. Now, let's add a few more helpful panels. The States panel will go to the left group with the Scope panel. I also highly recommend the Snapshot panel, which lets you take snapshots of your document to restore later, which is a lifesaver if you're experimenting with different designs. For those of you using a lot of adjustments, the Adjustment panel is a must-have, as it gives access to all the adjustment presets. I'll place this panel next to the Layers panel for easy access. Finally, if you use Linked Layers, Make sure to enable the Links panel. I'll keep it below the Layers panel next to the Transform panel. Now that we have put so much effort to setting up our panels, it is time to save our setup. Go to the Window menu, select Studio and then Add Preset. Give your preset a name and press OK. If you ever wanted to revert to the default, you can reset from the Window menu and you'll also be able to test that your preset saved correctly. Select the saved preset, and if everything works, your customized layout should reappear. Pretty cool. Saving a studio preset also saves any customizations you make to the tools toolbar. To demonstrate, I can go to the view menu, choose customize tools, and make some adjustments. 
After saving the preset, I can switch between presets and notice how the toolbar also gets updated. To remove any preset, go to Manage Presets, select the preset you want to remove and press Delete. Easy peasy. You can also customize the main top toolbar. Right click on it, customize toolbar, make your changes. And finally, let's not forget to save our workspace preset. Both the main toolbar and your tools toolbar will be saved and restored with the preset. If you're working on multiple computers, you can actually transfer your presets. Open your explorer or finder and navigate to the shown folder. I'll include a link in the description. You can actually see the presets as folders and now you can copy them over to another computer or just back them up. One final note, the workspaces are always per persona. So the photo persona has its own set of presets, while for example, the export persona will have different presets. This makes sense since each persona has unique panels tailored to its functions. The studio preset feature in Affinity is pretty cool and can definitely help to speed up your workflow. Make sure that the panels and the tools you use often are directly available. Besides being useful, it also gives a touch of personalization. I hope this video will help you out in setting up your own workspace in Affinity Photo. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you found this video useful. Until the next video.